It is 912 this morning. As you get your kids ready to return to school, parents of younger children may have some questions about how to maintain an appropriate relationship with your child's teacher. What's the best way to communicate? Are any topics off limits? Joining me live with some great answers on parent-teacher etiquette is veteran educator Lindsay Cadillier. She's a fourth grade teacher at Reagan Elementary in Brownsburg, currently on vacation with her family down in Florida. Lindsay, good morning to you again this morning. How do we find email addresses and phone numbers for teachers? Great question. So a lot of times your school website will have the teacher's um, email address through the school as well as their phone number and extension. It is something that is often also shared by teachers at those back to school nights with those welcome back to school emails. Um, and if in doubt, you can typically call the front office of your child's school to get that information as well. What about reaching out through social media? So it's really best if you get in contact with the teacher through, through those school uh, contact places as opposed to via their personal social media. And anymore, a lot of schools have things besides just email and phone that you can use. Um, some schools and teachers might utilize um, Remind, which is a platform that allows texting. Um, there's various things, uh, parent portals, Blackboard, Schoology. So there are a lot of school-based communication resources okay. that are going to be um, a much better route than trying to reach a teacher through their personal social media. That makes a lot of sense. You also say make sure the teacher knows is the best way to contact the parent because parents numbers Absolutely. change Just sometimes. like parents want to have the updated information for our emails and phone numbers, it is very important um, that teachers and the school have the best way to get in contact parent with parents as well. Um, not just the best way, but what is their preferred method. So if they give us an email and a phone number, which would they prefer us to use? Would they prefer an email? Would they prefer a phone call? If you are able to utilize any of those messaging or texting platforms, would that be the parent's preferential form of communication? Okay. You also say allow teachers some time to respond to questions. Why is that so yeah, important? Absolutely. Um, so you have to keep in mind, you know, most of the day we are with the, the students and teaching. Um, and it's important that you understand maybe what your students, teachers, maybe prep time is or office hours are. If it is a teacher that has their prep time in the morning and you send them an email or leave them a voicemail in the afternoon, it might not be something that they can address that particular day. It might be something that has to wait till the next morning as that is when the teacher also also has availability okay. and again it just comes down to making sure that you say hey I'm I need a phone call back I am an understanding that it might be the next day but we will get back to you we have less than 30 seconds to go and final question if you do want to talk you, you mentioned tell the teacher what the conversation will be about before you actually talk that's always a good idea it's it's much better for um, both of the parent and the teachers best use of time to have that information so that the teacher can come to a meeting, a phone call, respond to an email prepared. Um, so instead of just saying, you know, call me, please, can you call me? I would like to speak to you about X, Y, Z. And that way we can we can use everybody's time effectively and be respectful of, in those situations. Lindsay Cadillier, fourth grade teacher at Reagan Elementary in Brownsburg. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoy Florida before you head back up this way. Thanks, we're heading home today. But All right, safe to travels. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.